Welcome to our unit on electron configurations. This sounds a lot scarier than it really is. Really, when we talk about electron configurations, we're talking about the ways in which electrons are arranged within an atom. As you might expect, the electrons are very, very important, especially when it comes to why things react and when they react. So in this unit, we are going to take a look at the models associated with how electrons are arranged within an atom. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the organization of electrons within an atom, describe what an energy level, sublevel, and atomic orbital is, draw the shapes of each sublevel, and predict how many electrons can be held in each energy level. I want you to know that this lesson can sometimes be a little confusing for students. So it will be a little tough, but you'll see very quickly after we go through a couple of these lessons that you'll understand exactly what you need to do. So just bear with me. The quantum mechanical model of electrons within an atom says that we cannot pinpoint where the electron is, but we can only get the probability of where the electron is. If you went on to study chemistry elsewhere, you would learn a lot about the quantum mechanical model and you would learn a lot about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And quite frankly, it's really beyond the scope of this course. So I do wanna tell you that at this point, we're not really so much concerned where the electron is exactly. It's more about the probability that it'll be located in a particular area. Electron configurations is what we will use to show how electrons are distributed within an atom. Remember when you were back in middle school and your teacher probably put a picture of an atom up that looks something like that? Well, this wasn't the entire truth because at that time, if we started talking about all the things that we are going to talk about right now with the arrangement of electrons within an atom, your head might have exploded because honestly, it would have been way too, ex too confusing at that point in your educational career. But today, I am here to talk to you and not lie to you anymore. You are finally gonna have a little bit more of a complete picture in the way electrons are located in atoms. So this picture might look familiar. There is something called principal energy levels. Principal energy levels have whole numbers associated with them. As you might expect, these are the distances at which the electrons can be located in an atom. As you move away from the atom, energy will increase. So for example, electrons that are closest to the nucleus are lowest in potential energy, and electrons furthest away are highest in potential energy. Within each energy level, your electrons now occupy something called sublevels. Sublevels correspond to different areas that an electron can be located in an atom. They're represented by a letter. For example, S, P, D, F, G, so on and so forth. All of these letters actually stand for something. If you're interested, I really encourage you to kind of research it because it is pretty interesting. These are again our shapes. So for example, the S sublevel is spherical. The P sublevel is dumbbell. The D sublevel is clover. And the F sublevel is a double clover. So again, these are the shapes that are located within those principal energy levels. Now, within each energy level, as I mentioned, there are these things called sublevels. The way that we write it is so that we put the number in front, which indicates energy level, and the sublevel, which is the letter, next to it. So for example, in energy level one, there is only one type of sublevel, which is the 1s sublevel. Energy level two has a 2s and a 2p. Energy level three has three types of sublevels, a 3s, a 3p, and a 3d. Can you see a pattern here? A fourth would have a 4s, a 4p, a 4d, a 4f, and a fifth would have 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and then if you notice 5g is in parentheses, mostly because that's incredibly high energy and we don't really ever get there. 
but that's the pattern. Atomic orbitals. So within each of these sublevels, you now have these things called atomic orbitals. So, right, we know that atoms are three dimensional, they're not two dimensional. So, sublevels are taking into account two dimensional, but we need a three dimensional component. And so, that's what an atomic orbital is. So, each sublevel is oriented differently in three dimensional space, and each orientation is called an atomic orbital. Atomic orbitals can hold only two electrons at most. These are the number of atomic orbitals in sublevels. So for example, for the S sublevel, there's only one type of orbital or one type of orientation in three-dimensional space, and it can hold two electrons. For the P, there are three different atomic orbitals and six electrons, because again, each orbital can hold two electrons. So three times two is gives you six. In the D, there are a total of five different orientations or five orbitals, and that can hold 10. F has a total of seven orientations, and that can hold 14. And again, just with the pattern, G would have nine, and then 18 could be held within there. So you may say, how am I supposed to know this? And to be honest with you, it's really just memorization. But chances are we'll be using it so much in class, and you'll be using it so much for homework that you really won't have a hard time remembering these. Orbitals for a particular sublevel are very similar in terms of their shape, but different in terms of their orientation and size. So um, you should have been handed out a sublevel shape diagram in class. It's very important that you take a look at that to see what I'm talking about. Let's talk about the number of electrons in each energy level. So I don't know if you remember something that you did in middle school, but most likely you drew something called a Bohr model, which was similar to the picture that you saw early on in this video. So in this video, you saw the nucleus, and then you saw these rings around the nucleus. And you may remember that the first ring could hold two electrons, and the second ring can hold eight, and the third ring could hold 18. Well, guess what? These are where these numbers come from. So for example, in energy level one, there is a S sublevel, and remember the S can hold two electrons. In energy level two, there is both an S and a P sublevel. So each S can hold two electrons, each P can hold six for a total of eight. Notice that whether the S is a 2S or a 1S, S can always hold two electrons no matter what. Same thing with energy level three, right? With energy level three, we have a 3S, a 3P, and a 3D. S can hold two electrons, P can hold six, and D can hold 10. Again, whether this P is a 3P or a 4P, um, a 2P, P's will always hold six electrons for a total of 18 electrons in that energy level. Energy level four, so there is an S, a P, a D, and an F. S always holds two, P always holds six, D always holds 10, and F always holds 14 for a total of 32 electrons that can fit in that energy level. As I mentioned, you may say, how do you know this? Well, again, this is something that you'll just have to memorize, but the truth be told, you're gonna use it so much that you'll really have no problem remembering. In general, S is lowest in energy, then P, then D, then F. F is highest in energy. Electrons are often said to be lazy particles, which means that they don't want to exert more energy than they have to. So for example, we say that electrons prefer to occupy the orbitals that require the least amount of energy. As you might expect, those are the ones, of course, that are closest to the nucleus. So as I mentioned, this may be a little challenging for you right now because you're not exactly sure of the whole picture. But as I mentioned, bear with me because it will get easier as we go through the unit together. Thank you so much for watching. You did a great job today.